through all the reactions that we cover in organic chemistry, you may have noticed that very few of them involve forming carbon-carbon bonds. Why? Because, frankly, carbon-carbon bonds are often difficult to form. The reaction I'm about to teach you, called the Diels-Alder reaction, is an extremely useful way of forming two new carbon-carbon bonds in a single transformation. To summarize, in a Diels-Alder reaction, a conjugated diene, like this one, interacts with an alkene, which we call a dienophile in a Diels-Alder reaction, to make a cyclohexene, like the one shown here. I'll now explain this reaction's mechanism, just so you know how this transformation actually occurs. During this reaction, our diene and our alkene, which we call a dienophile in a Diels-Alder reaction, get close enough to each other that their pi electrons are arranged. That happens like this. And you can essentially think of it as being like the opening and closing of three doors on three separate hinges. Thus, these pi electrons, if you think of them as being a door attached to a hinge right at this carbon, swing out and close right here, forming a single bond between these two carbons. This door with a hinge right here swings over here to form a double bond between these two carbons. And this door with a hinge right here swings out and forms a single bond between these two carbons. As that occurs, it forms this product, which when redrawn in a prettier manner is this cyclohexane. There's a tremendous amount of variety that one can incorporate into the Diels-Alder reaction. For example, if we use an alkyne as a dienophile instead of an alkene, then these electrons will do the Diels-Alder rearrangement. Once again, we see the door flip on a hinge right here, this one flip down here, and that one flip here, to form this type of product, which is a cyclohexadiene. There are two carbon-carbon double bonds in this ring. Now, similarly, we aren't limited to using unsubstituted dienes or dienophiles. Hence, we can begin with a diene and a dienophile that have a variety of different substituents, represented generically here as R1, R2, R3, and R4. To give multi-substituted cyclohexene or cyclohexadiene products, Alternatively, if we use a diene and a dienophile whose pi electrons are already pre-embedded in cyclic molecules, as in this example, then after the Diels-Alder reaction occurs, we can get a polycyclic product. Once again, we could imagine any of these starting materials already being substituted in a variety of manners, which would allow a wide variety of substitution in our final product. Here are several examples of different Diels-Alder reactions that we might do. If, for example, I reacted with my 1,3-butadiene with this compound called maleic anhydride, I would get this polycyclic product. This is a reaction that my organic chemistry students actually do in their organic chemistry lab. Similarly, I could react dienes with an alkyne, as in this example, to get this product, or with a uh, cyclic diene itself to give this intermediate. If this intermediate, which is also an alkene, could then behave as a dienophile in a subsequent Diels-Alder reaction, we can get this tricyclic product. Now, since its discovery in the late 1920s, the Diels-Alder reaction has probably been used to synthesize literally tens of thousands of molecules. Here's one example I thought I'd show you from Professor E.J. Corey's group at Harvard, which in 2004 reported treating molecule 6, called Dane's diene, with dienophile 7 and chiral catalyst 8, to stereoselectively give product 9, with 94% enantiomeric excess and 92% yield. Over various other steps shown here, compound 9 was successfully converted into this final molecule known as estrone in an enantiopure form. Estrone is an estrogenic hormone of significance in numerous biological processes in females particularly, with specific relation to menopause. Diels-Alder reactions of cyclic dienes give particularly interesting products. For example, if we take cyclopentadiene right here and treat it with this dienophile, then like all of our Diels-Alder reactions, these electrons flip out here, forming a bond with carbon-1. 
These electrons swing over here to form a carbon-carbon double bond between two and three, and these electrons flip out here to form a carbon single bond between here and carbon four. That ultimately provides this product. Now one thing you should notice is where the atoms in our cyclopentadiene starting material end up in our final product. I've numbered those atoms in both the starting material and the product in this slide for your reference. You can see in particular that atom five right here ends up right here in the product which is pointing towards us three-dimensionally on this slide. This is a little easier to see if we redraw the molecule to look like this. As you can see, carbon 5 ends up pointing up like this. This type of carbon in this unusual spirocyclic compound is known as a bridgehead carbon because it kind of looks like a little bridge between carbons 1 and 4. Now one thing that you should notice is that I've neglected to show how the stereochemistry ends up being at this position over here. Does the bond to our methyl ester right here end up going up or down in the product? In other words, should I draw this bond as being a wedge or a dash? The answer is both. In other words, we end up forming some of this product in which the ester is pointing down and some of this product in which it's pointing up. The product to the left is the major product being formed in 74% yield while the one at right is the minor product being formed in 26% yield. And just so you know, the product at left is called the endo product, and the one at right is called the exo product. So let's get to some problems. Foremost, I want you to identify the products of the following Diels-Alder reactions. And next, I want you to identify the diene and the dienophile that you would need to assemble this Diels-Alder product.